fucking smashing, stinking rubbish, shit cunt music, fucking techno, fucking shit, bag of fucking, 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 fucking rubbish, lot of fucking shit cunt rubbish, fucking, fucking, really fucking, 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 what the fuck is that? Fucking, 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 I mean, what the fuck is that? The only trauma based system in the world! 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 The called valve amps. A lot of old sound systems used to use valve amplifiers, which had a really warm sound to them. And they, the longer you play them, the warmer and rounder the bass got, basically, out of these amplifiers. So that's what, it's an expression of sounds for me, the name of the label, is, is in it's a warm, you know what I mean, fat label in terms of sound. And it was that whole um, fascination with bass, you know what I'm saying? It was like that unique free and you had uh, LFO and then you had these people that copied them and whatever, but it was, that was the driving thing, it was the bass. Yeah. Most clubs around the world only have high bass boxes. Mm. They don't have the, the, the boxes that do the low bass because that's not a commercial frequency. Yeah. Pop music doesn't use that frequency. So these PA companies only make bass for pop music, do you know what I'm saying? Basically, we've built our whole system. Some companies take years, you know, Turbo Sound, all these big companies, they take years to develop systems. Do you know what I'm saying? We did develop our own system on a low budget over a period of one year. And I think it sounds excellent. You've got to get the acoustics right, the dynamics have to be spot on, do you know what I'm saying? In every angle, your crossover points, you've got to get your bass and mid, your highs, everything's got to, be, got to be right, do you know what I'm saying? And it took us about a year just to get the tuning right. We had to get loads of different drivers, basically speaker components from all different companies all over the world and run tests with them, do you know what I'm saying? Against other products and make sure we get the right roll-off and EQ dynamic points. Our main focus is bass, so the bass is the most important thing. We use a classic, classic bass cabinet called a Scoot bass bin, which is used by Saxon, Cox and all the Jamaican sound systems. We basically modernised the classic bass bin. You know what I'm saying, to brought it up to date. And um, the rest of the system, it was just designed to fit with drum and bass, basically. Do you know what I'm saying? The amps, everything, we had a lot of stuff custom built just to make sure it sounds right within what we want, sort of thing. It was a stage where, at one point, we couldn't afford um, any mid range and top end, so we had to uh, physically build them. Carl designed these speakers, and it's like made out of, uh, what was it made out of there? Um, what, flares and stuff? Yeah, it's uh, ply, but it's yeah, like yeah, birch, birch, birch ply. And, 16 of them. 16 man. of them, and it's okay. You yeah. think 16 is like a small number, but when you're making them with your hands and that. And sore hands. <laughs> we didn't sleep for Sanding. like four days. No, four days. We five days, man. Five days. We, started, well, we started on Monday, we mm. ran out of time by. Um, we ran out of time on actually on 24 Friday. 24 hours a day. Yeah. Sun Building up, Sunday, cabinets sun by Sunday. hand, glue them, wood and saw in and screw in and spray in that to get the mask and spray them all after. The whole thing was, was just sick, a nightmare. It was, it was pain. It's not a joke. We're talking about six, three seven and a half ton lorries pulled to the brim of the rim of sound system. Yeah, it's like a convoy. Bass beans on top of bass beans. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think we're going to build it. Yeah, exactly. I know that. People just think, oh, they're talking shit. They ain't building <laughs> they, ain't, they ain't building no studio. They're not doing nothing, mate. They're just talking fucking shit <laughs> and making tunes for V. Yeah. A sound, system, a sound system of this size and take it on the road is a bonus. So I didn't think I was going to build something this big. I'm telling you, I'm showing you, you better stop there. This is a warning. I'm telling you, I'm showing you, you better stop there. This is a warning. I'm telling you. Oh!
system was heaving, it was absolutely rinsing. The presence of the sound system was completely in your face. You got full body resonance. Wicked sound system. We had a really good time, didn't we? Good time. Danced all night. That was fucking the bollocks, mate. I well enjoyed it. Thank you very much. There were people coming up to me, and I mean, I have friends and uh, uh, they're coming up and they're saying that, you know, they have baggy pants on and, uh, you know, their boxer shorts were shaking and people's hair was shaking and the wind was blowing it and it was good. Yeah, every time I walk through the crowd, any event we do, I get people coming up to me, tackling me. And just like that. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, mate. <laughs> the reputation of the sound system is now completely worldwide. Wherever we go, wherever we go, every country we've played in, literally, and that's not like we've played a lot of places, a lot of states in America, we've played Japan, we've been everywhere, we've literally, yeah. you know what I mean? And, um, and the reputation said, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is, can you bring the valve sound system over? And then you explain to them, you know, if you can't shit 16 times. Um, for me, you know what I mean, hearing Valve sound, the best thing about it is like hearing everything in the place shake. I was in the mass and he was playing and like everything was just moving just like this, you get what I'm saying? And it was wicked, you get what I'm saying? The whole place was trembling and you know what I mean? It was just awesome. Every time I go abroad, people are saying, what's the Valve sound system like? Do you think they're going to bring it here? Do you think they're going to bring it to America? Do you think they're going to bring it into Europe and all that? It's become like a, like a legend and uh, Really stressed. The first time I ever wore earplugs. For them man to be building a sound now, nothing but respect for that. And this sound is ridiculously good. Trust me. I've been on the MC and the set is just wicked, loud, big, clarity, heavy. Wow, man, it's going. Trust me. DJ. ever happy with what stage we're at we could, we're never saying well this is it and, and we're great and we're fucking we're big shots because we're now on this level i like to always think that we're always progressing and we're never ever do you know what i mean never content with where yeah, we are you're never content we're always do a bit better never no it. It. <laughs> yeah, we're just starting man. yeah we're gonna buy a club basically and we're gonna permanently install half of the system into a club that's like that is just the goal of this whole fucking project as well as jacking the sound system is having our own club club is the best sound system base. in the world yeah. basically so, yeah. Hardcore drum and bass, you know what I'm saying? Clean and raw, uncut, right? You mean to the fucking commercial public, man? What's that? Is that what I mean, G? I used to go up his ass when I was like 10, man, and listen to beats. You know I'm saying I was in school and he was working, man, so every Friday he'd come home with a big bag of records from Hitman Records. That's the one, mate. And he was just busting up the beats every, every day in there, man, mixing up. And I had to go in there and listen to all the tunes, you know what I'm saying? And it inspired me, man, you know what I'm saying? Clarky. Known him for a long, long time. Long, long time. And when I met, I met you, I, Kevin, here, I met Dean in here, man. I met him in here, man, was making some beats as well, so introduced him together. And look how it's ended up. Everyone's been brought up in the shop, man, when it comes to, like, house, fucking drum and bass, the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? When we were kids, this is the place where you come and get all your white labels, the whole thing. This is, this is, you know I mean? this is the point in London for buying the music, full stop, classic. Legendary black market records. First ever shop where I had a section just devoted entirely to drum and bass. The first ever shop. Classic, it's a classic yeah. shop, classic. Yeah. If you're going to on classic now, it's just... It's an institution. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Got a couple of things here. Sold out for a few. Oh, is that the little section, yeah? Yeah, you did have a bigger section, but they've all gone. 
Got your other one there, that's gone. Got these here. We'll have the album out soon, smashing it. Late September, so there's a good vibe about it already. People asking for it and stuff, so. Oh! What's that? Alright, we're gonna go and do this interview thing, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, this is Lemon D. And this is Dillinger. And right now, you're watching the Kilohertz DVD. Like the current state of drum and bass it could be fixed up a hell of a lot better. Um, for obvious reasons, what we've been saying for the last sort of three or four years is that there's not enough musical influence in the music. You know what I'm saying? A lot of guys are just out there to like battle against each other with noisy, smashing beats and not really thinking about the overall do you know what I mean? thing. Whereas the tunes they're making are quite disposable. I mean, we all make disposable music to an extent. But, you know, you've got to have a flavour in there. And I find that there's not enough classics out there anymore. Back in the day when, you know, you know, 96 and before, you'd, you could still play certain tunes. Maybe not out, but indoors, and you could, they've got flavours and they're kind of still rocking, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, with drum and bass at the moment, they're too few and far between. So, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I'd like to think that people will uh, start structuring their music right in the sense that it's got more musical vibes in there. What I think of drum and bass right now, I think it's getting a lot better. I gotta say, two years ago, I thought drum and bass was, it went through a phase where there was a lot of smashing, stinking, rubbish, shit cunt music. I mean, there was no heart or soul to it. It was just turned like a load of mishmash of fucking crashing cymbals with fucking techno fucking shit smashed into it as well. Shrapnel, bag of fucking shit smashing around in the pot. You know what I mean? It, fucking rubbish, <laughs> to tell the truth. There were still good tunes then, but most of it was a, there was a lot of fucking shit cunt rubbish being played, do you know what I mean, and made, do you know what I'm saying? But now, things are getting a lot better. I'm just hearing a lot more flavours, do you know what I'm saying? Surfacing. But Surfacing, man, a lot. Now, yeah, but there still is a lot of good stuff coming yeah, out right like, now. You need, like, a, there needs to be, like, a, a majority of people making the music need to be making it, you get what I'm saying? If we go out, how many tunes are you hearing? You're probably hearing probably, like, five to six, seven, and the rest of yeah, it's normal. I agree with that. I'm just saying, I'm saying that, yeah. to you, compared to two years ago, yeah. that fucking five or six tunes is tremendous, mate, because yeah. I weren't hearing no five or six tunes. I was mm. hearing, like, two. So right now, I'm fucking, I'm like, yeah, there's mm. fucking six or seven now, mm. or whatever, <laughs> there's eight now, so yeah. it's getting fucking better. Yeah, yeah. And mm. what I'm really pleased about at the moment is that, you know, a year ago, you, or a year and a half ago, you could have played them, like, a beat, a tune with like beats switching and smashing and all over the place and they'd be standing there looking at you saying what the fuck is that now they're getting back into beats again beat switching flavors different kind of breakbeat patterns they're getting back into that thing again and that is what i love and they're getting back into that and that's fucking very promising right now so i'm going in the studio and i'm switching patterns i'm doing what i love man i like to get an intricate with beats i'm starting to do it again and i'm playing tunes like and half of the crowd are into it was it like two three years ago i would have done that played a tune like that and like probably like 5% of the crowd have been into the rest of them and looking at me, what the fuck is that? They wouldn't understand what I'm doing. So that is a good thing. That shows me that people are being educated and they're getting back into breakbeats and they're getting back into patterns and switchings and flavours again. Basically the, it's going to take yeah, a long time. Yeah. It's going to take... I, I think if everyone just knuckles down and, and fucking continues making oh. flavoured beats again, mm. with patterns and things, I think a year from now, I think we could be rolling again, really. Mm. I think the drums, as long as the drums come back into the music, that's a long... If you look at all the tunes that have been released over the last three, four years, how many tunes can you honestly say that have got real, not even real drums, but drum patterns in them? You know what I'm saying? Drum edits, patterns and shit like that. So it's like, okay, the drums are coming back and, you know, drum, bass, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully it can, you know, people can understand what we're all about. It's like, you know, 
we coined the phrase, we put the bass back into drum and bass. Let's hope that people can start putting the drums back into the fucking drum and bass because we kind of like... We're, we're fucking doing a lot for the scene, man. We built the sound system. Mm. We didn't that for a fucking joke. That's to help the scene, man. That's the fucking, you know what I'm saying? Shape the future. Mm. That was drum and bass. Get it back to how it's going to actually be, man. You need the bass. You need the fucking right sound system. You need it to sound right. If you haven't got the bass in the sound system, you're going to make tunes to cater for other frequencies. You're going to start making tunes with high, noisy bass lines like we've done before we built the sound system because they cut through on systems better. You play a deep bass, stinking little, dirty, little, grimy deep bass tune on a shit that's got no deep bass, so they're going to look at you like, what the fuck are you playing? Because it's going to sound terrible. The noisy tunes will sound better than the, the ones with the growling deep, deep bass lines. The album Killer Hurts. It's a continuation from last year's album, which was called Big Bad Bass. Uh, this album is strictly dance floor again, but you got to understand why we've uh, coined this one the Killer Hurts. Because the Killer Hurt basically is a measurement of sound frequencies, i.e. bass. You know what I'm saying this yeah. album has been designed yeah. for the dance floor. You know what I'm saying? Heavyweight, stinking, nasty, stinking bass lines, crunching you, and smashing you straight in your face. Raw, undiluted, raw bass. drum and bass, yeah. straight in your face. Ain't no fucking around, you know what I'm saying? It's the mm. real thing. You know what I'm saying? We've been testing these tunes out all over the world, especially on the vowel sound system. We've, we've hurt a few rib cages with these, with these tunes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they've done the job, they've done the real, they're the real thing. Kill hurts. The real deal, totally. Good Girl is just a little, a little step out, a little. The, the, the way the beat pattern is in the bass, it's just an old little grimy step out thing from the old, it reminds me of old blue metal, metal this kind of thing. It's got that old step out kind of pattern to it, that old rider kind of step. And that's basically what I wanted to do on that track. And it's been getting played a lot. I'm surprisingly the people do like it. Because the way the scene is at the moment, everything's rolling and then a lot of the kids that understand complex break pat breakbeat pattern tracks. I didn't expect them to take to it man. But it's it's very fucking encouraging to see that they're getting back into to, um, breakbeat patterns again man. So that's you know what I'm saying? That, that's a real good thing. So that was a good girl. Ride With Us basically was uh, a track that I put together. The whole vibe of it was to sound quite 80s in the sense of um, the vocal, uh, 80s kind of pop rock kind of vibe. Because um, I was watching a film that week, because I, I was watching a lot of DVDs at the time, and I was watching a film called Lost Boys. It's basically like a lot of runaways uh, that were riding with a bunch of vampires. So uh, I just coined the title Ride With Us and just basically put a track together with the whole vibe that I got from that film. It wasn't supposed to be deep, it was just supposed to be a rolling out thing, but it's just got a vibe to it really, and that was it, you know? Crunch, it's a track that I designed for the valve sound, you know what I'm saying? It's a crunching, dirty, smashing bass line track, with beats switching and chopping all over the place. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just letting that and the way I felt, and when I've done that tune, I felt angry that day. I wanted to just do something that I, that I love doing, which is smashing and crunching beats and crunching bass lines out. And then I find that over the last like five years, I haven't been able to do that as much because the crowds have responded better to more of my rolling style tracks, like um, Southmans or things like that, tracks that just roll out and they're yeah, quite simple to people that are newcomers to drum and bass, they can just roll to it. And you haven't got to be into drum and bass for like years before you can understand it. Where Crunch is a, is a serious like, smashing, crunching track, you know what I'm saying? For people that know about patterns, old school drum and bass patterns, you know what I'm saying? From the early 90s, going right through to like 96, when things started to roll out more, you know what I'm saying? But I just had to do it, I had to get it out of my system, I had to smash something in someone's face. And that's what I've done with Crunch, Fast car. I made it for a laugh, basically. I just, I got a simple drum loop up and I just like, um, I 
I've got a microphone and I've you know, hooked it up to my car and just like revving the engine and I thought come up with this idea at Basker. I basically made it for just DJing in the States basically. I, thought I wanted to make a track that I could play in the States on a DJ and it just fitted in with the whole vibe of the States. Thing. So I made Basker and it was a fun track, I made it as a joke. So I'm saying, and it blew up and it, you know, it ended up being a single but it wouldn't be my choice personally for a single. But the crowd wanted people want that track, man. It's a single, you know what I'm saying? So it's come as a single, man. And that's what it's got. Just roll. Basically, that is it. The title just tells you. It's just roll. You know what I mean? It was. Roll that. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, it was just. It's no deepness, no thought to it. It was just like a, a basic drum and bass roller, rolling beat, rolling bass line. And a snare that was a bit mixed a bit too much in the sky, as Carl says, but you know, it was there and at the time I didn't have another track to put on the album, to be honest with you. And it was there and it had a good mix to it apart from the snare, which was in the, in the sky. But uh, it, it, it kind of fitted with the whole sound at the time. So I just went with it. Hands in the air, that track was inspired by Raves in like the early 90s, basically. We used to go out to raves like Innovation at Crystal Palace. Not Innovation, Elevation, sorry, at Crystal Palace. And like you get DJs like Frost and Blue Ride and everyone ripping it up. And those days, when the tune had a big break band with a big string break band, the kids used to have like white gloves on and they'd be like, their hands would be in the air. And like, Saying that I just wanted to recreate that vibe again in the track, and that's why I've done it. That's why I've done hands in here, basically. Yeah, Afterlife uh, was basically a track that I'd written four years ago, and I'd just done beats and I gave it to a friend of mine and, uh, called Michelle, Michelle Gale. She's like an established singer and actor, and uh, she wrote these vocals on this track, and I was really impressed. I was like, yeah, it's just like this can work. But the actual vocals overshadowed the track at the time. I wanted to mix the track down, and I never actually did anything with it. So what I did was uh, kept it there until I was ready and I thought at the time I was just doing kilohertz it'd be good to have uh, a vocal piece on there and also the fact that Afterlife had this kind of like soulful vibe to it it kind of tied in with what we were doing with like you know each track had to have a different vibe to it a little ear of vibe to it so um, that was the whole uh, uh, thing sorted for me and basically I decided that I'd use uh, Afterlife on the album just to break it up a bit you know and keep it on that kind of soulful jazz thing with a jazz break kind of pattern. Right, time out. You know what, time out was just a little rolling thing what I've done. And, um, because it's not a concept album, because it's just a club album, I wanted to show a few different styles. Time out, it just reminds me of just a, a kind of just a little rolling kind of jump up vibe. But it's still got a bit of heart in it. The intro says that with the little vocal textures that come in and the string and the string patterns. But basically, it is just a little roller. It's nothing deep, nothing to write home about. At the end of the day, rollers are good. In the club, they work. And that's what people like. So sometimes, you just got to roll out. And that's what I've done, roll out, time out. Program one was basically, um, I put a lot of uh, uh, harsh, like K, like like you know, um, 1K to 3K, like frequencies in the beats and on the strings and stuff. I just mess mess around with radio frequencies and time. Some of it you can't really hear, but it kind of makes up the atmosphere of, of the of the of the beat and the tune. And um, the reason why I titled it as Program One because it was as if it was like you know on the radio Program One, and that's it basically. Generation X there was me having a bit more fun, a bit more thought went into that. Um, Previously, it got released on a uh, 12, but I wanted to go back in on it and make it a bit more um, accessible for the club, just so it's more rolling, and it's just me having fun um, in the studio. So I decided that day that I wanted to be John Lydon from the Sex Pistols. I just got on the mic and put it through a distortion effect on the mic, like they used to do in the 80s, the old cheap way, and just rolled out a, uh, a ravey, punky kind of rolling valve sounding track really you know what I'm saying and, um, the vibe's there but I prefer to have John Lydon on it do you know what I mean so uh, if he's watching then uh, 0208 853 49000 info at valve please should have ripped something out you know I'm talking shit
bass bins with us. For the last month, we've been preparing for this gig. Um, we've, we've made a point of making tonight's gig very special, um, basically because of our relationship with TOV and everything else. Um, it's, it's nice. Plus, we're in London. We, we, we want to let the London people see what's happening. They're missing out. We're always everywhere else, you know? Went to a Reading and it fucking blew the place down. Real good, mate. Real good. Yeah. 
System. I've seen it a couple of times before and this time I've remembered to bring my earplugs. I mean it is a perfect place to hear drum and bass music. I think the DJs love playing the music on it, the people love hearing the music on it and it's just a totally different experience you know. Yeah Dillinger's tunes probably sound the best but everyone else's sounds pretty fat on there too and it's just something different, something fresh you know, it makes the night different. I like it a lot. Yeah, the truth is, I mean when I was up at university in Leeds my friend put on a Valve System night and I actually had to help put it in and I tell you, there's a hell of a lot of speakers and it takes a while putting all that together. A whole team, three van, van loads and stuff, it was like, you know, it's a big thing and, uh, you know, and you only have to go in there once and you hear what it's all about. I do because I love it. I just, but yeah, that's me, man. I wouldn't be doing anything else. No matter how much grafting goes into it, no matter how many times we have difficulties in that, we always get through it. And when you can stand back at the end of the day and look and watch everyone having all that fun and that's enjoying the way, that's it, the it's one, just, man, yeah. it's, that's what it's all about.